Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar, Achieving Successful Healthcare Outcomes with a Post-COVID Network Strategy, presented by Healthcare Innovation. My name is David Rath. I'm the Senior Editor at Healthcare Innovation. Uh, today's program is uh, one in a series that we've had sponsored by Extreme Networks. So thanks to our sponsor and to our audience for giving us your time and attention. Uh, before we get started, we have a few housekeeping details. Uh, to submit a question, please use the Q&A box to the left of the video window at any time. You don't have to wait until the end of the program. For technical issues, please press F5 to refresh. And if that doesn't work, you can submit a question with your issue through the Q&A panel. Finally, uh, join our webinar conversation on Twitter. You can tweet using the hashtag uh, HILiveWebinar. Uh, and the presentation is available under the event ta resource tab on your screen. Um, we've a, we have a great team here today from Extreme Networks. Uh, they're going to have an in-depth discussion on the lasting effects the pandemic will have on healthcare networking strategy. I'm going to come back at the end of the discussion to moderate any questions we have with the audience. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Matt McNeil for introductions and to get the panel kicked off. Matt? Yes, thank you, Dave. Thank you, David. Great to be here. Again, uh, my name is Matt McNeil. I run our U.S. healthcare practice here in the States for Extreme. Uh, happy holidays, all. Appreciate you taking a few minutes to attend and really looking forward to, a, um, I'll say, a quicker session about how the benefits uh, of not only the Extreme Networks, but also kind of get into the discussion points of a post-COVID network strategy. So, Bob, let's, let's pass it around before we hit it. Uh, I'd like to have a few introductions here. Bob, would you like to go first? Uh, thank you, Matt. So, Bob Zemke, I'm the Director of Ecosystem and Vertical Alliances here at Extreme Networks. Thanks, Bob. Doug? Doug, over to you. Uh, hello there, Doug McDonald. I'm the Director of Technology for the Office of the CTO. So, really happy to be here. Echo, happy holidays. I'm really interested into um, diving into healthcare. I come from a healthcare background and healthcare innovation. That's really what we work on every day. So excited to be here. Thanks, Doug. Dave? Hey, hey everybody. This is Dave McLean. So I'm the uh, SE manager for US named healthcare accounts. And I've been in IT for 25 plus years, 16 of that in healthcare. So healthcare is the uh, my my vertical of choice. I seem to seem to have hit each vertical over the years, but uh, healthcare is my home. Uh, so yeah, I've got uh, family members that are uh, in in healthcare. My wife's an ER nurse. My daughter's a cardiac ICU nurse, and uh, my daughter-in-law is a pharmacist. So uh, I couldn't get my son in there yet, but he, he's still working on it. Yeah, it's great. I mean, appreciate you on, and obviously uh, all the experiences come into play here as we uh, open up the discussion. But first, I just wanted to um, uh, make everybody aware, we sent out some announcements about this, but we are gonna offer a chance to win an iPhone 12 Pro and a Roku. Um, and I'll talk about a little bit more at the finish here, how you can actually double up your chances. So we're gonna have this running up until Friday. So, uh, and then, you know, might not get there quite for the holiday time, but obviously it'll be a good new year and uh, something that uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more in detail, but obviously we want to spread a little holiday cheer here too. So thank you for attending again, an iPhone 12 pro and a Roku. So it'll be two separate uh, gifts for two different uh, parties. All right, let's, let's kick it off. And I have, uh, I brought out my old Blackberry, Bob. Um, I don't know if you have yours still available, but um, it was funny, I was playing around with it earlier and my thumb started clicking the side, you know, to, hey, scroll down, scroll up. I enjoyed the secure messaging and it, you know, kind of brings up the conversation we want to get into as a panel of Blackberry versus iPhone and how it's, uh, how, how things have changed. Yeah, I, I like to use it as a good parallel, Matt, to kind of what takes place in healthcare IT and innovation and in clinical care. And when it, we look back, those of you that were old enough to remember it, the BlackBerry was the state-of-the-art state of the art mobile device used in, in a lot of healthcare organizations. Uh, I was responsible for rolling out the first solutions in my health system. And, you know, it had a number of strengths. It was secure, it had the long battery life, we were able to control it and protect the data. 
But at the same time, it was also very limited. We didn't realize it at the time, but we always kind of thought you're not going to access an electronic medical record or anything of significance. You really just did two things with this device. You received phone calls, you received email, or you know even some pages. But, but that was about it. And suddenly a new device came out and it really made us rethink how, what we could do from a mobility stra strategy, right? The iPhone came out and suddenly it was voice, video, these robust applications that could connect to the hospital Wi-Fi. I could use cellular when I'm out and about. BLE brings enhanced capabilities with other devices connecting into it. And the application growth just kept growing and growing from that. Think about what you used an iPhone when you first got it versus how you use it today. And we draw that parallel to what takes place in healthcare and clinical environments. We've designed most of our hospital networks based on a fundamental architecture and principle going back about 20 plus years now. The, the basics of, of Ethernet and the topologies around it was that you had a single data network for one type of device, computers. And then from there it was we added voice to it. Well now, fast forward 20 years, look at what's taking place, how many applications, how many types of devices, everything from guest access and patient entertainment services to video systems and capabilities, critical applications, mobility. There's a lot of demands now that requires a very flexible solution to meet these needs, uh, unlike when we had a static environment. Same with the BlackBerry versus the iPhone. And not only that, Bob, but we've got an explosion of, you, know, you were talking about multiple devices and, and kind of the migration of devices or the introduction of new devices into the healthcare environment, uh, the explosion of IoT, the uh, idea of telemetry type devices that are you know providing direct patient care or providing uh, information to a clinician and, or to a, a treatment plan and part of a larger treatment team, um, that information is, is now flowing faster than ever before. So even with all of these different types of mobility and mobile devices and wayfinding and directions, et cetera, um, the importance of these devices is for user experience and for patient experience within each of these healthcare organizations. And that's going to be uh, probably especially true once we get through this pandemic and through the uh, the issues of post COVID, when we get back into a vaccinated population, where um, healthcare organizations are doing a lot more of their outpatient treatments or their um, uh, day surgeries and a number of different activities like that. Yeah, to me, it, it's all about flexibility, right, and service enablement. So what 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 we've done here at Extreme is be able to take operational services that you just have to wait for, right? All those things that you mentioned. Hey, I need IoT needs. I, Biomed needs a new device on the second floor, right? Um, uh, new enablement of services. And one of my favorite quotes mm -hmm. is, what I used to have to do in, in days or weeks, I can now do in minutes. Uh, as far as enabling new services and technologies and hence that change, right? Hey, when I started to get music instantly on my phone, right? From the iPod to the iPhone, I started to get applications. All those things can now come true from your legacy 1987 network to something that's supported today and support your digital initiatives. So that's kind of the welcoming effect uh, that Extreme can bring is that whole digital transformation efforts that are going on into healthcare. They can be enabled now and also, it really puts you as somebody who is, might be a decision maker in the IT department or an executive, it puts you in front of the business. And that, that meaning is I can actually transform the network to be ahead of your business needs and think of you in alignment. So a partnership, more of a, hey, we'll do that next change control. It's next Sunday at two, right? All those kind of things that we get and enjoy. So really the operational efficiency piece has been key, hence goes back to the whole BlackBerry, secure, simple, works, does traditional things to something I've got today, which is more dynamic, more processing speed, enable services, and basically become a service provider of your network, which is really a neat situation to get into as we try to recover from the COVID reality. Um, 
Doug, you want to start us off with the co you know some of the discussion points in this this topic? Yeah, absolutely. And just one uh, insight into the last one. So you see COVID driving innovation, right? So personally, uh, my parents for the first time are using their iPhones uh, for telemedicine. Yeah. Um, talked to a healthcare customer yesterday. They've got an increase of 600%, 600% increase in telemedicine visits. Um, so I've become a, a support engineer for my family and getting them <laughs> up and running. But it it, you know, for a long time, we talked about these telemedicine initiatives, and I came from a, a operational background at a large healthcare institution where we were trying and trying to get this technology moving and trying to get it off the ground and trying to get adoption. And we literally had goals and um, benchmarks to say if we're successful or not. And it was a slow go, and to get the insurance companies ramped up. So, COVID really has driven that overnight. That. Uh, that innovation need to, to really drive some diversity and some convergence um, for z this type of thing. And you know, Dave talked about IoT, Gartner's talking about 20 plus billion devices for IoT. And a lot of those are gonna be in healthcare. And so whether those are in the, the confines of your hospital walls, or maybe they're going to be shortly in the home or, or senior living now has been quite disrupted from this. So. Uh, will there be more aging in place and, and more technology to help enable that? So I think that's really exciting for some of the innovation that's been driven. And the, the BlackBerry certainly got us out of the gate. And now we have all sorts of uh, great technology, mostly on our belt. So it's, it's an exciting part. So to kick off the next slide, the, the COVID reality really comes into that, that drive of innovation. I joined Extreme Networks. Um, just weeks before the, the massive outbreaks. Um, and, and within a week of time of being at the company, we're literally looking um, together on this team here and uh, many other components of Extreme, formulating global SWAT teams to address uh, challenges and how we can help and how we can uh, utilize our technology um, to, to just help in the crisis and the panic of what do we do now? And it really started out of Italy and uh, Italy had just a massive spike in cases and they started to reach capacities and um, suddenly it became uh, the question of how do we expand quickly out into our parking lots? How do we facilitate network connectivity to triage tents and, and testing uh, drive ups and all these um, things that you might not have ever done as a healthcare provider? So how do we do this and how did Extreme um, enable that capability by our flexible and al al uh, agile solutions, excuse me. <clears throat> um, that was really exciting to be part of Extreme at that time when we said we have these types of things in our portfolio and we can provide these solutions, um, these point to point bridges where you can't get a cable and really great things um, to kick off that initial here we can help um, from a technology perspective and, and start that flow. Yeah, great points. Yeah. And, and I'm sorry, Matt, I'm just gonna jump on to uh, what Doug was saying. Yeah. You know, pre-COVID, we were in a healthcare industry really working towards how do we reach uh, population health? How do we provide population health services out where the, the patients live, work, play, uh, instead of bringing them into large brick and mortar, right? So pre-COVID, every healthcare organization had that as a goal and an objective, uh, and they were working towards some roadmap and strategy that they had developed to be able to deliver. Uh, what COVID did was really just expedite all of those strategies and even new strategies folks weren't even thinking about. And that all comes back to, you know, like self-service portals, mobile device connectivity back into their healthcare, their, you know, their primary care physician, into specialists, et cetera, to be able to have that healthcare service that, that they're expecting. And that user experience and, and the satisfaction scores that come along with that get driven by the technology, get driven by how it's implemented in these different healthcare organizations. And that's what Extreme, and to Doug's point, what Extreme was really working on and focusing on in the very early stages of COVID. And now this, this webinar even is, is how do we look at this in COVID now? And what is it that we're going to continue to do and build on in this digital type transformation that COVID really accelerated? 
true. Telemedicine is here to stay. To stay. Um, we've got all the virtual providers that are ramping up. If you've uh, seen those kind of things come into play as well, as far as provider space uh, and aid, also existing providers as far as the technology. So it, it, it continues to, to advance. Bob, anything you'd like to add on that subject? Yeah, absolutely. You know, another area that I saw tremendous impact in was in terms of support, operational IT support and service delivery to hospitals, clinic organizations. And mm -hmm. when COVID hit, we suddenly saw a need for flexible solutions, whether they were cloud-based or on-prem, but being delivered in different ways than had been done before. So again, historical architectures were not very flexible. We saw some organizations that could immediately develop and deploy new advanced services or applications moving employees to their homes so that they were no longer in the clinical care environment to reduce risk of infection. We saw IT suddenly having to work from home yet have visibility and capabilities just as if they were on clinical care floor. And so it really has forced a rethinking again of what does it mean to support care? Are we inside the four walls of the hospital? If the patients aren't there, does IT, is IT always gonna be there as well? So how did we gain that visibility? How do we manage, let's say, the RF network inside an ICU ward when we don't want IT to go in there? Do I have an infrastructure and the capabilities to see just as if I was that, as I used to be you know, years ago, that IT guy with the laptop walking around the floor taking signal strength readings, trying to troubleshoot why a telemetry device from Draeger is having multicast issues. So it's really creating, I think, an opportunity to rebuild and kind of redo what was considered best practices or standards in the past, which was since care was delivered inside the hospital, my staff had to reside inside the hospital. The tool sets that we were purchasing were usually outside of the infrastructure budget, but they were meant for one-off support environments. So I, I didn't have a lot of strategy around it. It was very reactive. And with COVID now, we're rethinking how to best scale up and better support more effectively this dynamically changing environment. So application visibility, what's the security capabilities or environments that we're in? How do we address them if I can't have my own and staff go to those floors? How do I support clinicians that are now working remotely and, and logging back in through remote services to the hospital? How do I have visibility into that? Where are my applications coming from? Are they really still in the basement and the server racks of the hospital? Or is it a mixture of on-site and off-site cloud-based services? Where is that traffic flowing? How well is it performing? So with that, I think we're gonna really see a, a, a a heart to heart sit down and reevaluate what is going to be best practices for the infrastructure that's now supporting this very dynamic environment. Yeah, and, and also, you know, part of our last episode was cybersecurity, right? All those things going on and increased you know, threat vectors that have happened from, from, you know, not so friendly countries here lately that has affected healthcare and targeted healthcare environments. Dave, let's let's start with you this time. As far as uh, throwing the, throwing it out there, as far as increased cybersecurity threats and discussion points, but um, you know, obviously, it's everywhere. Uh, I, I thought you could take a minute to kind of go into some of the things that are occurring, but also maybe paint a picture of how we're evolving our strategy here at Extreme to help customers and potential clients uh, with those kind of threats. Yeah, sure. So you know, my background and my my. Um, my career actually started in security. So, you know, my I was one of the very first 22, I think my certification for CISSP is in the 20,000s, low 20,000s. I think they're well over 400 or something now. So, you know, a lot of folks have, have come after. So I've seen a lot in the security space. I've seen a, a, a lot of uh, vulnerabilities come and go and even stay, unfortunately. Uh, the challenges with healthcare is, you know, the obvious biomed type devices that are under FDA um, certification, either as a system or a solution, and the 
OS or the uh, operating system that, that, that run them. Uh, the ability for uh, healthcare organizations to provide security around those devices is, is pretty uh, severe at this point, right? So you know, we're talking about a critical component that's part of treatment and part of uh, patient record even, you know, information that's going and being passed into uh, patient, patient records. You know, healthcare here recently has been a target uh, because of the value of the healthcare record. Um, I think the, the dollar amount for per healthcare record out there in the gray black market area uh, for identity is is something around the order of two hundred and forty dollars per record, and you you know this number two most desirable or um, uh, costly record is a credit card or a payment card. Uh, I think that's around ten dollars. So you see a big jump between the information that's contained and the healthcare organization has about individuals and about uh, their identity. Healthcare is a very um, um, lucrative target for some of these, these attackers. It also is um, an attack vector that erodes trust uh, and reputation. So, you know, a lot of healthcare organizations uh, with COVID, with the, the, the type of things that are going on in, in uh, regulations and reimbursements, the, the margins and the profit margins are very razor thin. Uh, cybersecurity be plays a big role in continuing to have uh, consumer trust uh, in that healthcare organization. So uh, for a number of reasons that I just named off, and I went kind of in a rambling, it, it wasn't in a particular order, so don't put more trust in, in one thing other than, than another. But you can understand that the security focus is, for healthcare is, is uh, more so now than it has ever been, uh, just because of, again, the demand for those healthcare records. You add in all of the new technologies that are coming um, in, in advancements in technology, for treatment like biomed devices and smart IOT or IOMT medical things uh, that are out there in the healthcare uh, network, um, it, it becomes even more critical to be able to protect and be able to know. So some of the basic things and probably the most important thing is, and, and probably the biggest challenge for most, most healthcare organizations is identifying and knowing exactly what is on your network. So, you know, you, it, it used to be that healthcare was like a large college campus, right? People come and go, it's a public environment. You have various networks, you have a dorm over there, you have inpatient over here. There's a lot of similarities. Um, but the security aspect of it, I think is even greater on the, on the healthcare side. You have to identify everything that's on your network. You have to be able to respond to auditors and say, you know, at a moment's notice, pull something up in a network segment and I say, I know what these devices are. They're trusted devices or, you know, this network is a protected network. And we talk about segmentation and being able to isolate systems of, of, of similar functions and features or similar security vulnerabilities, right? And being able to isolate those. And that's all something that Extreme does, right? So we do, uh, we can identify systems as they come onto the network. We can provide uh, through various techniques, um, one of which is uh, what we call automated campus uh, solution, which is our fabric solution, being able to provide segmentation for those like devices. Uh, we're also able to provide um, granular security even within networks where, you know, an example, we had a customer that was building out a new uh, clinic and they had just unboxed a brand new x-ray machine and they were putting it onto the, onto the clinic network. Uh, that x-ray machine, security came along and they did their due diligence before opening and found that it had something like the order of 170 vulnerabilities uh, 98 of them were, were critical. So this is a brand new machine. So we have something that we call Extreme uh, Defender, uh, where we are able to, in 10 minutes, eliminate all of those vulnerabilities from access on the network. We're still able to use the, F, the, F, the uh, X-ray machine. It's still non-modified, so it solves all the FDA, you know, or remains um, consistent with their certification. Nothing's changed we're able to actually add an enforcement point and be able to manage those vulnerabilities, take them off the network. So you can't, you, an attacker can't expose, or it's not exposed to an attacker or to an attack vector from the network. So it basically eliminates. Um, we're doing a lot of work on the uh, wireless side. We have one of the very best 
uh, and, and air defense, being able to identify those devices, rogue devices, uh, um, threat players that are in the RF environment, right? So on a, on a wireless environment, we have um, uh, a lot of our cloud offering with uh, artificial intelligence and AI. I know AI has, you, you know, some some folks, it's, it's, it's kind of a taboo type thing to say, but that information is in our cloud service if, if you're a customer of, of Extreme. And we're able to process that. We're able to give you insights to what's happening within your environment through uh, cloud offerings too. So, and, and also being able to manage that environment, Bob was talking about it earlier, uh, being able to manage that environment uh, when you're not on site and have that management plane outside of your brick mortar infrastructure. Uh, and, and, and that's where the actual compute capabilities uh, lie to be able to pro make the process uh, happen for this vast amount of information. So Extreme has a number of different products out there. Uh, I know I, I, I went on a little long here, but I think I hit all of those different portfolios and we would love to have you know, further deeper conversations. You know, if I could add on to that, Dave, you know, one area of concern I, I tip, I've seen in a lot of healthcare environments is what I see is the lack of education and communication between the clinical or the biomedical uh, engineering department and IT. So that, that lack of communication uh, creates a misunderstanding or assumption as to which department is responsible for security. Reality is both. I'm also seeing a gap as it relates to RF security, radio frequency, whether it's BLE or Wi-Fi, there's just a general assumption that someone is monitoring this airspace, someone is protecting these devices. Mm -hmm. And that, that creates a situation, I think, especially as we move past COVID, and we see more BLE, Bluetooth Low Energy, being adopted in medical devices. Um, most organizations don't have a process in place or a strategy to monitor the behavior in the BLE span and to monitor the RF associated to it. We also don't see as people adopt tools like wayfinding and asset tracking using BLE as a means to immediately identify where assets or med devices are, how to uh, ensure that those those tags and those devices are not being manipulated. It's going to be an area that I think most security departments are going to have to start talking and creating their strategies with the engineering departments about. And just yeah, to add, point, I hope you can hear me because I dropped off there for a moment, just to add to Bod's sediment. So as a customer, um, I use the extreme air defense um, product that Bob's talking about. Uh, and what we're really looking at there is this suite of products that provide not only for some security capabilities in protecting your airspace and protecting that BLE and that Wi-Fi capability, um, but also a lot of forensics capabilities to help you with troubleshooting um, and some location capabilities um, to give you a lot of different uh, trajectories that you can utilize. But one of them is some of the reporting that we're doing around um, in-building uh, contact tracing. So that, that provides for some capabilities there. Uh, but if we focus on some of my favorite portions of that, um, we get into advanced forensics. And so we have the capability to look at um, replaying and reviewing um, IoT and, and mobile devices and providing for 325 plus um, data points uh, per minute from each of these devices. So imagine the power of the capability of having these number of data points on all these devices so that you can understand what is this device doing? What, where, what is it communicating with? Um, what type of operating system is it? All, all the other things that Dave and uh, Bob most, both mentioned are really important to make sure that we're you know, highlighting the, the utilization and automation of these types of products that are gonna give you a leg up on these um, security vulnerabilities. The World Health Organization came out and said cyber attacks on healthcare specifically are 2x. Um, if you look at the World Economic Forum, they said it's never been a more important time to focus on security than during this pandemic. Um, it, it's a global problem. Um, there are a number of challenges. And, and during all this stuff, and you're trying to ramp up all these additional um, IT services and manage things at home, and, and all of us uh, as technologists in healthcare have never seen anything like this before. 
well, how can we use these tools to automate these processes? How can we run reports that will allow us to understand whether or not our devices are in compliance? How can we understand with utilizing our tools with Fabric to make sure that the segmentation is just happening automatically and save ourselves from having to reconfigure a whole bunch of networks at all these pop-up sites. So when you put all these things together, it becomes kind of a hybrid of this security and troubleshooting capability that's never been more important uh, as we evolve through this crisis. Yes, thank you, Doug. Um, it's it's been a it's a bit of a learning experience for all. That's for sure. Um, and as we continue to transition forward, take two steps forward, take a couple back. Uh, you know, back and forth as far as um, you know, COVID and awareness, and also the capabilities. And obviously, we're going to look to continue to move forward with ideas and integrated solutions to be successful. Um, help manage those critical situations as we continue to expand and come out of the um, pandemic, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, any guys, uh, this has been a good discussion on this uh, topic as far as anything else you'd like to add or any additional comments? Or is it time for a commercial real quick? All right. We'll do the we'll do the extreme commercial. So hey, so again, a little little bit about extreme in healthcare. Uh, we're one of the few manufacturers that do, do run dedicated teams. We have over three thousand customers worldwide. Uh, obviously, with that global presence, we are partner with some significant partners for healthcare success: Philips, Ascom, Stanley Aeroscout, Drager. We've done those certifications and testings that you're looking for in a network provider to do provide success and obviously we drive towards success and compliance and HIPAA, PCA, PCI, uh, infram studies, all those things that equip you for a successful endeavor uh, as we continue to move forward in digital transformation and advances in technology. Also I'd like to note we've been the intelligent health provider, um, pavilion excuse me, provider for the last several years at, at him. So hopefully we will all see some of you in Vegas, right? Uh, to celebrate a little bit together uh, in, in August, in early August, and working with some of those capabilities that uh, as a platinum member and to continue to support our, our brother and him to be successful. So just a quick note there, uh, I just wanna do a quick commercial. Obviously we're thankful for our, all our customers and clients and wanna wish all of them a great holiday season here and all the best in the new year. So I'll turn away from the commercial for a second, all right? But also, there's been some awards lately. Um, Bob, you want to kick off the first award? So, of course, if you're in you know, IT, it's Gartner. For, for us in our industry, Gartner, everyone always looks to see the magic quadrant for network wired and wireless infrastructure. And you know, when you're looking in healthcare, you're looking to reduce the risk of who your technology innovation is going to be with. And so for the third year in a row, we are in that leader's quadrant in terms of scale and functionality, showing, showcasing you know, our capabilities. And as I like to you know, look at that in a healthcare scenario, what that really means to me is we have an install base that's global and there's lessons learned that can be shared from all the customers we have around the world in this space so some examples would be you know when the iphone first came out it was an american-led strategy of adopting it in healthcare and that's where we saw most hospitals in the u.s were saying our clinicians are insisting on using this iphone help us make it work and we had europeans that were saying this device will not be used anytime soon so by the time it moved, kind of made its way across the Atlantic, there was best practices we could share. Wi-Fi, voice over Wi-Fi devices from ASCOM were you know, a leader out of the EMEA region, as well as IP-based telemetry solutions such as from Draeger. So as those became adopted in the US, it was best practices that came from the Nordics and from Germany around how to support these types of devices. 
And in Asia PAC, we're now seeing, as an example, IP nurse call systems and also IP based patient entertainment and television services that are from Asia and from Europe now coming into the US. And so we can share the experiences around best practices, how to optimize the systems how to ensure safety and security of these systems, as well as optimize the performance for real-time data that flows either through telemetry systems, nurse call, or even patient entertainment. Yeah, it's it's great to be a Pat Riley Lakers 3 peat isn't it? With all the growth, <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, it's good. Um, Doug, you wanna take the next one? Yeah, so I, one of my favorites is the Gartner Peer Insights Customer Choice Award. And what I like about this so much is it's actually uh, an award that is provided to um, folks based on uh, validated, unbiased information that's entered into their website. So Gartner has over 3,000 um, technology vendors that they work with. Um, you can go on this website and you can rate um, the company based on what they call the 360 lifecycle review. So I think this is so key because really what that includes is um, questions are around um, the kind of the whole life cycle. So from technology evaluation to implementation to service and, and to support. So to get this award again, I think is really a testament to putting that all together. Um, and, and, you know, I always want to be, rated by folks that are using my technology and this validates that so what is what really goes into that so first we have a 14 year average tenure for our support services i think that's unprecedented across the industry that means the people that you're calling on the phone and getting support from um, they have been with extreme for 14 years um, we've got uh, an average 9.14 uh, out of 10 average CSAT score. You can look at lots of industries that, that follow those levels. Um, we have 100% in-house 24 by 7 by 365 support. Um, and last stat for you know the kind of a commercial, 93% um, of, of the calls that come in are first call resolution. So I think a lot of that um, emphasis and investment uh, into people and into, into our support capabilities really help us um, nail down things like the this peer insights award so really excited about it yeah it's been what in the quote of a healthcare customer last year the support but also the technology game changer you don't hear that very often. i mean that, that is the exact quote coming from one of our clients doug that's a great great analogy here and it's right we we're proud to be a leader of the peer insights. And it's one of the things that we, we wanna talk about a lot. Dave, how about you finish with the, you know, good things coming threes right here today. So what's what do you think as far as the, the third gift uh, we'll yeah. talk about? So we've mentioned it previously. So this one's actually very, very exciting for us here at Extreme. And, and that is the recognition from CRN with the product of the year, not, you know, a runner up, not in, you know, best mention. It is the product of the year, and that is what we're calling, you know, our Extreme IQ, which is our cloud offering and management solution, not only for our wireless, but also for our switching. And uh, all of our portfolios, as we continue to integrate and add capabilities into XIQ, XIQ becomes that single point of glass management. I, I know it's overused, the single point of glass phrase. But with XIQ, you have the compute power behind you. I mentioned it earlier about all of that data that's out there. Um, you know, XIQ runs in every single cloud provider. So we, we can run this in Azure. We can run this in Google. We can run this in Amazon. And we can provide um, a, a management plane for your infrastructure where it's reducing the costs and expenses of on-prem uh, equipment. Now, having said that, we offer this also in a flavor. So we can offer it across all three of those different cloud providers. We can offer it as a hybrid. We can offer it as a complete private cloud. We can offer it even as an on-prem service. So you know, if you don't like cloud or if for regulatory reasons, you can't participate in cloud services, that's okay. We can still bring this same product to you that, that won this award for the management ease you know, of, of uh, your entire infrastructure. We can provide that to you 
uh, right on prem as well. So a lot of a lot of great things, and that's where the that information and intelligence is coming from. So you know, there's I, I say that uh, you know running a network, uh, the, a, a high speed reliable network is no longer enough these days, right? You have to have that value add that that network provides, the data and the intelligence. And XIQ is recognized as that portion to really leverage the intelligence and that value add data that's coming off your network. It, it, it exists today. This is opening that door for you to be able to leverage that. So really proud of, of this uh, and, the, and the fact that we were recognized as the product in 2020. Yeah, and that that it's it's kind of puts the cherry on top of the year here for us as far as advancing solutions, and it continues to get better, folks. We're layering in some of that air defense that we talked about, the WIPs, BLE mm -hmm. control, IoT. Uh, so if you're looking at those kind of policy needs, uh, locationing, all those things that kind of give awareness are now part of the essential package of IQ. So after it went to the testing and got awarded, we keep it we keep advancing technologies into it. So it's uh, something that we're looking to subscribe with our clients and, and grow with together. So, hey, three great gifts uh, where we want to share these gifts with you and have a successful season here in 2020. Uh, any last parting shots or, um, or um, comments, folks? I just want to thank you all for your time today. This distinguished panel can be um, um, joined on, on conversations, meetings, uh, uh, those kind of things as we move forward. It's been a great partnership with you all, so thank you. So personally, uh, I wish you all a great holiday and happy new year here. And for our clients and uh, our partners, the same thing. It's been it's been a hard year, a trying year for us all, but we've been able to work through it together and look forward to success in 2020. So um, you know, kudos to you all and, and enjoy your time here. So, but I would like to finish um, the last commercial, which is, is is a holiday commercial, right, the giveaways here. So we'll keep this uh, live. I mentioned Friday, we might extend it, but we'll let you know as far as when we publish uh, the final date for the drawings. How you double up, it's pretty easy. Visit the site that's included right there, extremenetworks.com backslash healthcare, and request a demo. That's all it is. There's nothing, no recourse, there's no... Um, um, on-premise equipment required. It's a simple demonstration and conversation piece, which I can be included, or Dave, or Bob, or Doug, or all the, the great folks that we have that can work with you. And that way it'll double up. So not only for attending or watching the webinar, but also you can do it from a demo point. So thank you all, appreciate that. David, I will pass it up back to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Matt. I think we have uh, one question from the audience. I think it was, uh, this might be directed at Doug because it was something that he spoke about. It, it said, can you expand on your comment in regards to use of in-room or maybe in-building uh, contact tracing? Yes, absolutely. So um, we have a really unique offering where we have a, a solution set that we have, which is a network centric based approach to location services. So that means um, in most cases you have a device like the iPhone we talked about earlier, and maybe you know, in Matt's case, it's the BlackBerry, but we can still provide a network centric approach to tracking those devices. And essentially what we know through authentication and, and how this device is moving through the facility, we can then expand on that and add several uh, data points um, that I think will be very interesting to healthcare organizations. Mm -hmm. um, one of those is the client tracking capability um, to see your workflow throughout the facility. Um, the other is kind of that client journey. Where have you been? Where have you gone to? Where have other people been around you in that same, same place? Um, other data points that can come out of that is congestion monitoring. Um, so we can take a look at a specific room and how many people are in that room, and we can actually get alerts to say that um, there's a problem here that probably uh, we're over capacity here or there's not appropriate social distancing. Um, so all those things wrap into our amazing location uh, services platform. Um, and th those capabilities are continuing to grow by the day. Um, so we're happy to discuss more about this. Um, it's a really exciting component of our technology. Uh, and we're really looking forward to uh, getting this technology um, into the hands of folks like yourself to provide some value for you. Well, thanks for expanding on that. 
Well, this has been a really thought-provoking and timely <laughs> discussion, both about the pandemic and post-pandemic and cybersecurity issues. So uh, I want to thank Matt, David, Bob, and Doug once again for today's excellent webinar. And we want to thank Extreme Networks for making today's program possible. And we want to wish happy holidays and thank everyone in our audience for joining us. And we hope you'll join us in the future for another healthcare innovation webinar. Uh, and that concludes today's presentation. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.